Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Greetings, everyone. I'm going to be doing a podcast on Wi Fi signals. I'm going to be reading an article. This interested me. I put it in my uh, bookmarks and made a note. It's called Energy Harvesting Design Aims to Turn Wi Fi Signals into Usable Power. I thought it was interesting. I always had this impression that Tesla had this idea, or he always promoted this idea that you could send power through the air. I'm wondering if that's what this is in reference to. Device for harnessing terahertz radiation might enable self-powering implants, cell phones, other portable electronics. It's by Jennifer Chu. I'll put the link in the descriptions. I think it comes from Big Think. All right, I will begin. Any device that sends out a Wi-Fi signal also emits terahertz waves, electromagnetic waves with a frequency somewhere between microwaves and infrared light. These high-frequency radiation waves, known as T-rays, are also produced by almost anything that registers the temperature, including our own bodies and the inanimate objects around us. Terahertz waves are persuasive in our daily lives, and if harnessed, their concentrated power could potentially serve as an alternate energy source. Imagine, for instance, a cell phone add-on that passively soaks up ambient T-rays and uses their energy to charge your phone. However, to date, terahertz waves are wasted energy, as there has been no practical way to capture and convert them into any usable form. Now physicists at MIT have come up with a blueprint for a device they believe would be able to convert ambient terahertz waves into a direct current, a form of electricity that powers many household electronics. Their design takes advantage of the quantum mechanical or atomic behavior of the carbon material graphene. They found that combining graphene with another material, in this case, boron nitrate, nitride, the electrons in graphene should skew their motion towards a common direction. Any incoming terahertz waves should shuttle graphene's electrons, like so many tiny air traffic controllers, to flow through the material in a single direction as a direct current. The researchers have published their results in the Journal of Science Advances and are working with experiment experimentalists to turn their design into a physical device. Quotes. We are surrounded by electromagnetic magnetic waves in terahertz range, says the lead author, Hiroki Asobi, a postdoc in MIT's Materials Research Laboratory. If we can convert that energy into an energy source, we can use it for daily life. That would help to address the energy challenges we are facing right now. Isobes, or Isobis. Co-authors are Liang Fu, Lawrence C, and Sarah W. Badenham, Career Development Associate Professor of Physics at MIT, and Su Yang Zhu, a former MIT postdoc who is now an assistant professor of chemistry at Harvard University. Breaking Graphene Symmetry. I make a note that I heard or I I bookmarked something about graphene on how they found a way to get it cheaper or make it cheaper. Maybe I'll do a podcast on that. I'll continue. Over the last decade, scientists have looked for ways to harvest and convert ambient energy into usable electronic energy. They have done so mainly through rectifier devices that are designed to convert electromagnetic waves from their oscillating parentheses, alternating current to direct current. Most rectifiers are designed to convert low-frequency waves such as radio waves using an electronic circuit with diodes to generate an electric field 
that can steer radio waves through the device as a DC current. These rectifiers only work up to a certain frequency and have not been able to accommodate the terahertz range. A few experimental technologies that have been able to convert terahertz waves into DC current do so only at ultra cold temperatures, setups that would be difficult to implement in practical applications. Instead of turning electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves into DC current by applying an external electric field in the device, ISO, ISO wondered whether at a quantum mechanical level a material's own electrons could be induced to flow in one direction in order to steer incoming terahertz waves into a DC current. Such a material would have to be very clean or free of impurities in order for the electrons in the material to flow through without scattering off irregularities in the material. Graphene, he found, was the ideal starting material. To direct graphene's electrons to flow in one direction, he would have to break the material's inherent symmetry, or what phys physicists call inversion. Normally, graphene's electrons feel an equal force between them, meaning that any incoming energy would scatter the electrons in all directions, symmetrically, well, in all directions symmetrically. Isob looks for ways to break graphene's inversion and induce an acid a symmetric flow of electrons in response to incoming energy. Looking through the literature, he found that others had experimented with graphene by placing it atop a layer of boron nitride, a similar honeycomb lattice made of two types of atoms, boron and nitrogen. They found that in this arrangement, the forces between graphene's electrons were knocked out of balance. Electrons closer to boron felt a certain force, while electrons closer to nitrogen experienced a different pull. The overall effect was that physicists call skew scattering, in which clouds of electrons skew their motion in one direction. ISO developed a systematic theoretical study of all the ways electrons and graphene might scatter in combination with an underlying substrate such as boron nitride and how this electron scattering would affect any incoming electromagnetic waves, particularly in the terahertz frequency range. He found that electrons were driven by incoming terahertz waves to skew in one direction, and this skew motion generates a DC current. If graphene were relatively pure, if too many impurities did exist in graphene, or graphene, they would act as obstacles in the path of electron clouds, causing these clouds to scatter in all directions rather than moving as one. Quotes, With many impurities, the skewed motion just ends up oscillating, and in any incoming terahertz energy is lost through this oscillation, Isov explains. So we want a clean sample to effectively get a skewed motion. One direction. They also found that the stronger incoming terahertz energy, the more of that energy a device can convert to DC current. This means that any device that converts T rays should also include a way to concentrate those waves before they enter the, the, the device. With all this in mind, the researchers, the researchers drew up a blueprint for a terahertz rectifier that consists of a small square of graphene that sits atop a layer of boron nitride and is sandwiched within an antenna that would collect and concentrate ambient terahertz radiation, boosting a signal enough to convert it into a DC current. Quotes, this would work very much like a solar cell, except for a different frequency range, to passively collect and convert ambient energy, Fu says. The team had filed a patent for the new high frequency rectification design and the researchers are working with experimental physicists at MIT to develop a physical device based on their design, which should be able to work at room temperature versus the ultra-cold temperatures required for previous terahertz rectifiers and detectors. If a device works at room temperature, we can use it for many portable applications, ISO says. He envisions that in the near future, terahertz rectifiers may be used, for instance, to wirelessly power implants in a patient's body 
without requiring surgery to charge or change an implant's batteries. Such devices could also convert ambient Wi-Fi signals to charge up personal electronics such as laptops and cell phones. Quotes, we are taking a quantum material with some asymmetry at the atomic scale that can now be utilized, which opens up a lot of possibilities, Fu says. This research was funded in part by the U.S. Army Research Laboratory and the U.S. Army Research Office through the Institute for Soldier Nanotechnologies. I'm fascinated with this type of technology, the implications of what this could mean. I get the conspiracy mindset in, in a way, but these things fascinate me. I hope I have enough common sense, critical thinking skills to navigate the pseudo science bullshit nonsense, but with a little bit of skepticism that used properly that tells you to be careful. But uh, I think something like this is going to happen no matter what. There'll eventually there'll be some sort of integration. This would be the beginning of it, maybe. I think there's a potential for this to work for numerous people and pretty quickly from what I can gather. I can't say I've done a super deep dive on this, but it has come up from time to time, especially graphene. And I know I read a couple of articles about a breakthrough with it. I'll have to refresh my memory on it. But I think this is all great breakthroughs. Science will always look for the answer, find it, and never stop trying to prove it wrong. So when you see technologies like this, you might see potential for bad things to happen or for mistakes to happen. But at least science is trying to falsify it. And we hope that better minds come to an understanding of the implications. I love it. I think these things excite me at a level that gives me hope. I think everybody would look at it fairly, could see how important this could be for people with implants, especially those that are doing new work in bionic implants where it's reading brain waves to make hands move. The, the implication could be far reaching and pretty astounding. Love science, and I hope you enjoyed this. I will talk to everybody soon. Take care.